How's it hanging, fellas? I'm Otis, and this is another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, and in today's episode, do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I'm not sure why the Chief Prosecutor is here. I'm not exactly sure what happened at the end of the last episode. I think I was skipping through dialogue at that point. Ah, uh, we've proven that there was no murder that took place at the police department in the evidence room. And that the only murder that occurred was in the parking lot of the prosecution office. The prosecutor's office. But now there's a different mystery because we just found out some strange connections to a completely different murder case. A serial killing case that happened two years ago prior to the events current in the game. And it somehow ties together with this new murder that is happening. So it's similar to the last case where Edgeworth supposedly killed someone on, in the middle of a lake. And that all tied back to a murder case that took place when Edgeworth was a kid. And it was all crazy and fucking weird. And it, this is kind of similar. And you know what? I think I've uh, figured it out. I haven't looked it up or anything, but I think maybe what this chapter is and the reason why it felt like the game ended only for it to have one more chapter, kind of an epilogue type of shit where all of a sudden there's like new characters and stuff. Maybe this is all because this was some kind of an addition added to this version of the game because if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, this game is some some kind of a remaster remake of the original, which I think the original version of this game came out for either fucking Game Boy... No, it could have been Game Boy Advance, right? I think it might have been Game Boy Advance. And this is like the newest version of the game, because sometimes when I'm looking up stuff about this game, I find these screenshots from this game, but they're like really pixelated and really fucking retro looking, and I'm like... Shit, how fucking old is this game? Was it from the fucking 90s, where it came out on Super Nintendo or some shit? But no, it came out, I think, on Game Boy Advance. So that's a bit interesting, I don't know. I've heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we occasionally felt the powerlessness of the law. At least I did. Lana, I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, are you, what are you fucking saying? Wh why did she turn into him? I'll ask you again, chief prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't, did you? You didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? It's a Marshall. Uh, Marshall's brother, I think. Yeah, it was his brother. He got murdered by the serial killer in the case two years ago. His brother was a prosecutor. And supposedly... I don't know, they used fake evidence in that trial just to get that serial killer murdered. But like, I mean, he was a serial killer. I don't know what's Marshall trying to prove, that he was innocent? Or some shit? Like, what, what are they fucking doing? I don't know. Or maybe someone else was responsible for his death. Marshall does claim that his brother was too good of a fighter to lose like that. But fucking really? You think, I don't know, he couldn't have been jumped with a fucking knife? No matter how good of a fighter you are, if you get jumped with a knife, you're fucking dead. Drastic crime requires drastic measures. That's just the way it is. It is what it is. I don't know what we have to in order for him to get the verdict which he deserved. Damn. Fucked up shit, you know? I got this drink here. It's a tiger. But what the fuck is it? Balayla? Balayla. I don't know, I found it in the discount bucket at my local fucking 
grocery store. I was, as always, back from work, hunting for new energy drinks. Now I'm fucking looking around, nothing new. Then I look at the discount pocket and I'm like, what the fuck is that? It tastes like bubble gum. I'm pretty sure there's fucking multiple flavors of the Tiger Energy drink that tastes exactly the fucking same as this one. It's fucking ridiculous. It's bullshit. But Lana... I got that fucking memory card I told you about, but I fucking forgot to pick it up. That was the one thing I was supposed to do. Shit. Even if I involved forging evidence... Who the fuck cares? Am I right? Or am I mistaken? See, that's what I'm talking about. No. She forced evidence. Order, order, order. One of the remarks got such a stir that the fucking audience killed everyone. It was like a fucking riot. We, they just fucking trampled over our dead bodies. That's the must be the fuck most fucked up, ridiculous shit I've ever fucking I can comprehend in my mind. Being trampled over in like a fucking big crowd. Like, let's say you're in a huge crowd and you faint. Are people around you so fucking mindless and completely fucking out of their mind that they're gonna trample over you? What are they fucking stupid? No, don't fucking save the game. I remember that, like, I think a year ago. I think, uh, on previous Halloween, I heard about a case in Seoul. Was it Seoul? I think it was in Seoul. In Korea. Where there was, like, a huge Halloween party or something. And about a hundred people were coming to, like, some train station or something. And, like, a hundred fucking people died? Or even more than that. Being trampled over. And I'm like, what are they with on fucking drugs? One f person fell over. And then the next one just walked over them. What is this? Fuck, this is the most fucking insane shit I've ever heard. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what I, my sister said. I hate S's. S words are the worst. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We do what we get to do. In order for him to get the verdict he deserved. He wouldn't get a fucking death sentence otherwise? Or was there not enough evidence? Sh showcasing that he's a fucking murderer? How good of a serial, serial killer would he have to be for him to cover up all his tracks? He couldn't make any fucking connections and actually get him... Get him to death penalty without forging evidence? I don't understand if, like, someone, I don't know, was a drug dealer and he covered up his tracks real well. They had to forge evidence to get him locked up. But fucking... This sounds stupid. I never knew that the DSL-9 incident was just another name for it. The Joe Darkie killings. Sounds like everyone heard about these killings with me. Sounds like I don't do much fucking research about my field. You know? How the fuck did I pass law school anyway? I don't want a dark and convicted so badly. You know, I bet that there are certified lawyers in the world that are just fucking god awful at their job. So, I, I don't know. It's probably a brain surgeon or two that don't know what the fuck they're doing. That's why he, she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. The fuck you mean what happened to you? Also, it's ridiculously fu- It's been. Not anymore, though. Ridiculously hot today. It was like 15 degrees or something, like fucking summer. It's like, it's fucking... It's still winter, it's this fucking hot. This is this fucking bullshit, it was like freezing cold just a week ago. This fucking global warming is really doing its thing. It's all f there in the file. So dark and lax victim was prosecutor Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. What did you have to do with those fucking killings, Jesus? On the night prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Darker tried to kill me. 
Not gonna lie, Joe Dark it not only sounds, but also looks like a Grand Theft Auto 4 character. He looks like someone you... Like, well, I don't know, part of the fucking... Like a Russian assassin or something. What, he tried to kill you? What the fuck? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. That he bit dust. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Darker trial. I didn't see that one fucking coming. Can we talk about that shit? Happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year too. It was a terrible thunderstorm that day. Around the same time of the year too. Just like the previous trial. What did they all tie together that I have to do trials on the same day as the murders in the past took place? Uh, whatever. It was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. And certainly, out of motherfucking nowhere, this terrifying man came and burst into the office. Joe Darker. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. Like a banshee scream. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Darker tried to take me hostage. But before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then, what happened? I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window. Lighting up the office for an instant. I saw that it burned the permanent picture in my mind. I can still see it now. The permanent picture? Can you draw it? After the incident. I don't remember the moment Darkest stabbed Mr. Marshall. I wasn't important enough. They weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana. Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The way Emma's hairline kind of collides with her with her right eye from our perspective from the left. It makes it kind of look like she has one like her left eye kind of more closed than the right eye. And it makes her look like like she kind of doesn't give a shit too much. I mean provided bogus evidence. Yeah, the prosecutor's office wanted the guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edge refused it. Edgeworth? So he was using forged evidence, that stupid asshole. What is that fucking thing on her head? Why does she have like a bun? Well, the rest of her hair just goes straight down. But in that one spot she just has like a fucking bunny tail? How the fuck does she put it together like that anyway? You know what, Maya has the same thing, I complained about it because it makes no sense. Why did female characters have to have that on their head? It's so like some kind of a... It's like one of those things... In like... Like anime, sometimes the main character... Has like a... Like a strain of hair sticking out of his head. Kind of like to show you that that's the main character. They got a, like a... A little bit of hair, is that some kind of symbolic too? Like young girl sidekick character has to have a hair like that? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. I mean, imagine her model, or I mean her drawing right now, without that bullshit on top of her head. It would look much better, if you ask me. It just makes no sense when you fucking notice that thing, you can't just stop thinking about it. It's ridiculous. Could have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's what it all started. <laughs> it's about Mr. Dredger, and it's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Nature really was involved in falsifying evidence. After the case ended, Lana never, was never the same. She became a bitch. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. Permanent picture. What did you fucking see in the instant that the crime occurred? An onion man stabbing another man. Is 
that's supposed to be Joe Dark X, got an onion haircut. Dark can knock down Mr. Marshall and raise his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. Damn. I don't remember what happened after that, apparently I passed out. I fell asleep. It was so fucking boring. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. You've been through so fucking much. I wish these drawings were in color. I don't want to take too many screenshots of fucking shit that's in black and white. That would just look kind of weird. Couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago, you must have been 14. That's understandable. No one's good at drawing at 14. Right? I mean, I bet some kids are. Oh look, you're making the same pose you did that back then. It's all coming back together. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grow up, I'll become a scientific investigator. It helped that I was already dressed in a lab coat. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. See, that's a fucking... Emma's way better than Maya. She actually helped. She introduced you to new mechanics in this game. Like the whole spraying to look for blood. Looking for fingerprints, which I found very amusing. The moving around models. That wasn't a fucking thing before in the game. I couldn't look up a model and rotate it. That's something Emma introduced me to. So why the fuck on earth wasn't this throughout the entire game? That's what makes me believe that this is either like an addition. Like perhaps they took the 3D model rotating from the second game and made a new chapter in this one where you get to do it. Right? I don't know. I'm pretty damn sure it's not like they connected all three games into one and we're already playing the second game. That would have been the biggest fuck up I think I have ever did on this channel. If that were the case, I would just remake this whole Let's Play into a Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy Let's Play. And we would just play all three games in a row. But I won't fucking do that, so... Oh my fucking eye hurts. So many layoffs are happening. I heard that... Ah oh shit, sorry. I heard that there was a new Twisted Metal game in the works, but it was cancelled due to layoffs. What the fuck is going on with the gaming industry? Why is everyone getting laid off? Shit's crazy, you know. Unaffordable. Unsustainable with how every video game nowadays has to be a huge budget success. That's why the indie games is where it's at. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. Though I'm not... I don't know, I feel like my channel has a very balanced variety of games. I mean, at the moment we're playing Phoenix Wright and Skyrim, but... Well, Skyrim came... You know what I was just thinking when I was going back from work? Skyrim takes place... Well, in a Nordic-themed uh, land. When you play the game, most of the people you run into are these fucking big, buff-looking, white motherfucking Nordic Vikings, right? Beards, they speak funny, long blonde hair, type, that type of shit, right? I even believe that the canonical appearance of the Dragonborn is the default Nord male that you pick, that the game starts with. It's like if you don't customize anything about your main character, and you just go with that default Nord, that's probably what the de what the canon Dragonborn is supposed to look like. I think. I mean, I doubt the Dragonborn is a fucking Argonian. That'd, that'd be ridiculous, I think. I mean, would make much more sense now to think about it, since, I mean, dragons are lizards. But somehow I doubt it. I think that default uh, character you get at the beginning is probably the canonical one. Just like Captain Shepard, you know, has a canonical appearance, but you get to customize him however you want. It's probably also canon that you just went through the whole game using that shitty ass iron armor from the beginning, from the cover of the game. When I found that fucking helmet from the cover of the game, I thought it would be like the best helmet in the game, and only to find out it's a piece of garbage. Looks cool, but it fucking sucks. What was I saying? 
that like mattered. Oh yeah, so I co like there was only an Elder Scrolls 6 teaser, right? But from what I heard of the f of like fan base of the Elder Scrolls deducting by looking at the background of that teaser, Elder Scrolls 6 is gonna take place in Hammerfell and High Rock. So it's not gonna be one place, it's gonna be two places at the same time because two those two places are pretty small and there's like con and it connects to the sea. So people were speculating that we're gonna the game is gonna take place on these two continents. And there's gonna be a lot of like sailing involved. But you know what I thought? I think Hammerfell or High Rock, I forgot which one, is the homeland of the Red Guard. Red Guards are the race I chose in Skyrim, obviously. See, for example, my fucking Dragonborn, GZ fucking B, that's definitely not what the canonical Dragonborn looked like. He's not a black guy with an afro. There's no fucking way. But I just re I just thought while coming back from work that, all right, so Elder Scrolls Six is gonna take place in this like desert area where all the Red Guards are from. That means. That Skyrim was populated by these fucking big buff white guys. Elder Scrolls 6, Skyrim 2, is gonna be populated by mainly black people. And I can already see people making these fucking comparisons where, oh look, Skyrim came out in 2011, before everything became woke, and everyone in the game almost was white. And now we're some, I don't know, fucking 20 years later, 25 years later, let's say. And fucking everyone's black now. Even though, canonically, this game should take place in the area. It's like fucking get, having a game set in Egypt. Pretty much, and not fucking featuring some black people. Like Assassin's Creed uh, Origins, I think. But funny enough, Egypt is a much more diverse place than you'd think. It's not just all black people. There's a lot of... It's, they're not Caucasian, right? But the, there are like, I'm not sure, I think the, there's just a race of people that are just Egyptians. Like, that just, you know, look like white people, but they're not like Caucasians, Europeans, they're more like from Africa, so. So world is a much more diverse place than you'd think, there's not just white, black, and Asian people. So it's more fucking complicated than that. You know, and fucking another thing is that Bethesda has been bought by Xbox, right, a while back. But that was back when Xbox was performing somewhat normal. Now they're fucking laying people off left and right, closing down studios as it goes. And it fucking makes you wonder. There's even talks about how, for example, an Xbox exclusive that I was really looking forward to play. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush is actually getting a PlayStation release. A lot of games have been get from Xbox have been getting PlayStation releases. It used to be the case where like every other game, like sometimes Xbox would allow one of their exclusive games to release on PlayStation, but after it being on Xbox for like a year, I think Psychonauts 2 was like an Xbox funded game, but it came out on PlayStation too. So when you play Psychonauts 2, on PlayStation, what first appears when you turn the game on is Xbox logo, which is very funny. And, well, it makes me hope that Elder Scrolls 6 also comes out for the PlayStation, because I'm more of a PlayStation fan myself. Soon there won't be much of a choice, there will be either PlayStation or Nintendo, judging by how fucking Xbox is doing, because... I don't know, man, I don't think they're gonna make a new console, I think they're gonna focus primarily on their Game Pass subscription offer. I don't know, they're gonna allow it to be used on phones, maybe even PlayStation itself, to just kinda fucking go all out about teaming up with their biggest rivals and shit. It'd be really funny. So now when you wanna pick a console, you got only two choices. I mean, at, at the moment you get three, but soon it might be just two. Why, why did I start talking about this? I forgot. I was talking about some race issues for a moment there. Talking about how world is much more diverse than just three fucking races to pick from. You know, just how all Asians aren't made equal. 
Indian people are fucking Asians too. But I doubt when an Indian person goes to Japan, they're not being looked at, oh, you're a fellow Asian person. No, they're probably looked at like, oh, you're a fucking Indian. Right. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Got a feeling that's how it goes. The world is very funny, you know. For example, how Australia is filled up with a bunch of Brits. How they got fucking all the way there? Well, that's a complicated story. Or why do people who live on the fucking North Pole look like a bunch of Asians? How did they get there? Are they fucking Mongolians? What are they doing all the way fucking there? To be able to fight crime with my testimonies. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I should go back to the game. I'll start discussing race. Find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. You know what? My town that I live in is horribly fucking racist. Anywhere you fucking go, you'll find Celtic crosses, white pride, graffitis, shit like that. I one time noticed that there's like a website that's keep being graffitied everywhere. It's called like Autonom or something like that. And I was like, I was kind of curious one time. So I decided to check out what it is. And it's just the most ridiculous right-wing propaganda. Just the most fucking batshit insane articles I've ever seen. Every article is about how... I don't know, something about how fucking the left is the devil and shit. Shit like that, I don't even want to fucking think about it. But it made me think... Why do people in my town seemingly hate other races so much? My town is primarily made up of just maybe like a fucking 10% of people who aren't white and from here. So why the fuck do they hate fucking minorities so much? There's no minorities here. The f who the fuck are they hating on? It's ridiculous. What reason would they have to hate these people? You know, I can understand someone hates fuck a certain race. Because, I don't know, he lived in a neighborhood full of that race and they were all hoodlums and shit like that. Bunch of fucking cracked up motherfuckers or some shit. And he kind of grew... They kind of grew to fucking dislike them. They were like, oh, you're one of those people I used to only witness being not very nice people to be around. You're probably not very nice to be around too. Kind of, I could kind of understand that, right? But this? Like, why did they fucking hate minorities so much and want to be proud of being white like what is that something you earned that you, you fucking worked for it you had to work super hard to fucking earn your skin color now you were fucking born that way in a shithole no name motherfucking town that i'm from that no one even from the country i live in knows about so what the fuck are you talking about what am i talking about what the fuck is this something to get off my chest you know Another thing I was thinking about is that I think it was actually an interview with Lemmy Kilmeister about how he doesn't understand racism. Like, how do you walk down a street, see someone, and immediately hate them? And yeah, that's that's a very good point. And I was thinking about this white pride thing. So, like, they, I guess, love all white people. That's not the fucking case either. I bet these fucking guys I live around don't fucking like... I bet the people here who are these like fucking neo nazi motherfuckers, skinheads and shit, they don't fucking like other nationalities either. It's gotta be specifically white people from this area. That's the only people they like. And what if that person pisses you off, then all of a sudden you don't like someone you just said that you're like proud? That you're just like them? It's fucking ridiculous. I never understood belonging to some kind of a group, you know? For example, how there's these subcultures of people who dress this way. It's like, I don't fucking belong to any subculture. I guess you could... The only way you could describe me as a gamer, but... It's like... Another thing that I noticed is that how in certain gaming circles... Yeah, that's the, the thing. That's gaming circles. Like people who were into this game, and that's the only thing they play, only game they associate themselves with, and they interact with people who also play this game. And I'm like, 
I never fucking did that. I play. I beat one game. I begin an entirely different game. I'm not associating myself with just one franchise, and I never even interacted with any like group of people who are also fans of the same game game that I am to discuss things. It's like I don't give a shit. Like, what would I need to discuss with like other Phoenix Wright fans? Which wife is better, Emma or Maya? It's clearly Emma. I don't fucking need to ask someone online what they think. I don't know, it's fucking strange. Guess I'm an outcast. I think I spent the last seven minutes ranting about something completely unrelated. I think I made no progress in this episode. That's great. See you fellas in the next episode. Bye.